All right, welcome to the 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time Hope Beauty session. We have a great session ahead for today. Thrilled to have Dr. Lachine here with us today. And another panelist joining us as well from her practice who is in surgery right now. Dr. Lachine, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And for being such a great partner as well. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Talk us through a little bit your experience with, you know, quarantine and the pandemic so far and where you all are at. Well, uh, quarantine has been affecting all of us, uh, patients, doctors, people in the streets, everybody, kids, everybody. And I believe having a situation like this unprecedented, we haven't in the hundred years uh, uh, that we have been living uh, so far, that we had a similar situation. So everybody is trying his best to get, you know, solutions or cure, but um, we're taking baby steps. But anyway, during this um, tough times, uh, what I see that uh, most of the people have been uh, thinking about priorities again. So your health is a priority above anything else, above being at work, above traveling, about above anything. Uh, having said that, how many people knew how to take care of their health, make sure that they are healthy, not just that they think they are healthy. There's a lot of discrepancy between the people who come to me say, I know I'm healthy, but when you check the labs and you examine and you check the vitals, things are not like that, it's different. So the impression of people about health has changed dramatically since we started this uh, COVID-19 era. Thank you, doctor. Can you tell us a little bit about you and Dr. Safi, who's in surgery right now, um, your personal way that you all have handled everything? Well, the first thing was the safety of everybody. Our patients, uh, our uh, team, and us as doctors to continue serving everybody. So, you know, it, everybody knows the, how to uh, take care of the hand washing and the spraying and, you know, the, the alcohol rubs and wearing the masks and keeping the distance and all the good stuff. What uh, uh, others don't clearly know that these are all the outside procedures, but you need to make sure your immune system is also taken care of. The, the immune system has its uh, needs. It needs to be regenerated. It needs to be given the tools that it can uh, defend you with. It has a lot of criteria that we need to look at and see, is it working fine? Is it working enough? Is it strong enough? Is it up to the challenge? And this is a new thing that a lot of people didn't even think about before the quarantine and the COVID-19. So as we know, the uh, WHO recommendations, the uh, CDC recommendations uh, are that you have to take vitamin C, you have to take zinc, you have to take vitamin D. And who knew before from the population or the society that vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc are the crucial tools that the immune system need to work with? There is almost none of, of what the patients that had come to me, uh, none of them, they thought about, oh, vitamins, I really take vitamins to get my health okay, but for the immune system, that's a new thing. So immune system is the major soldier, the only person, the only soldier inside you that can help you protect you from the invaders. And that's why you have to treat the immune system properly, give it the tools that it needs, and make sure that it's working for you and not uh, against you. And it's a great practice that you each are at. Again, Dr. Safi is still in surgery right now, but in terms of being a resource for your patients and virtual consultations, you all stayed strong with all that through all of this, from we my understanding. We continue connected and, and we, we were even more available uh, than before, because at that critical time, you know, everybody's having doubts, everybody's afraid, everybody wants to talk to a doctor to, to feel comfortable that 
uh, they are okay, they have an access to medical care whenever needed. There was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, arrangements as a start for where to go, who to call, who, who to talk to first, and what to do if you get exposed, and what to do not to get exposed, you know, all that uh, needed, uh, you know, the presence intensively as a start, and it continues to, to be so. Well, again, you all are, are such, such a great resource to your devoted clientele, and uh, thank you for all that you all have done. And that's what we are here for, and that's what we have devoted our lives to. Thank you, Dr. Lachine. Thank you. Before we go into our Q&A, I want to formally introduce you. Dr. Lachine obtained her board certification in internal medicine and was later certified by the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. She is also certified by the Swiss Biological Medicine Academy in Switzerland. Dr. Lachine is also a certified trainer in ethics of international medical research by the University of Maryland and has a Cambridge diploma for teachers and trainers issued by Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. Dr. Lachine was a postdoctoral research fellow at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, then completed her internal medicine residency at Sinai Grace Hospital, Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Welcome, Dr. Lachine. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introductory, and thank you so much. Well, thank you. You offer a variety of types of optimization services. Tell us a little bit about those and what those treatments include. So being an internal medicine doctor uh, uh, brought me to an array of uh, human problems that are outside of textbooks. So the more you know your patients, the more you get connected to them, the more you feel responsible about it's not only a medication you give or a prescription and that's it. It's a whole life you're trying to define to the patient to feel better, to act better, to um, uh, live better and to think better and to prepare for the future to be independent and healthy as long as they live. So, Treating the acute condition is part of the practice, but the main bulk that I thought and I felt and I believed is important was to uh, build now for the future to have health sustainability for the longest time that we can live. People are expected to live till 110. So 50 is the new 25. 75 is the new 50. And we have all to act uh, in this you know, new uh, modality of uh, age. Um, people are pro uh, productive till they are 75 or even more. They, they have the experience, but sometimes the hold back would be their physical uh, activity or their powers or their musculoskeletal uh, system or even sometimes the memory. To avoid that and to prepare for it too, there was a gap that I felt the classic internal medicine is not covering. And the only bridge that I found was in the integrative medicine. That's when I started to integrate the, the integrative medicine or the biological medicine with the internal medicine as well. So um, you, you can look and um, you can look healthy, you can look young, but you don't feel it or you're not acting like it. Your body is not up to what you look. If you're looking young, I want you to be young inside out. I want your uh, muscles to be effectively working, uh, your immune system, your brain cells, uh, your heart, your lungs, your intestine, the gut, and every single part of this connected to all over the body. So you cannot go to a certain uh, GI doctor uh, to complain about one thing, thinking this is uh, an entity by its own. It's connected to all over the body. So if you, you think, for example, that the gut has a lot of population living with you, hundreds and hundreds of billions of bacteria, and there is good guys and there is bad guys. And you need to balance the, the good guys over the bad guys. 
Otherwise, you add weight when you're not even eating enough. You feel upset in the morning when you are just waking up. You feel you're dragging your body and tired when you have done everything you can to be healthy and good. And that's when people come to me saying, well, we don't feel our, uh, that's, that's us anymore. I, one of the patients was telling me, I feel my skin is not fitting me anymore. Uh, other one said, well, I have a lot to do and to give, but my body is not allowing me anymore. That's where we want to intervene right now and even before not to reach to this situation. So the adjustments of the body and the way you can balance the hormones when they are fading away, the way that you can balance your bacteria when they are not in equilibrium, the, the, the good bacteria is not enough to work for you the way we want them, the way your memory is not able to process everything the, in, in the velocity that you need it to do in this very quick pace and the, the, the stressful situations for the body, the mind, uh, the lack of sleep, the, you know, the lack of time for relaxation, all this takes a toll on you. The oxidative stresses, the, the stress of physical and mental stress, there is a lot of factors that we analyze and we uh, do like more and um, uh, a tailored medicine to every individual person. We don't believe that one size fits all. It doesn't work this way. It works that you as a person is genetically and immunologically and mentally and physically totally different from even your sister or your parents. And accordingly, we have to tailor the care for every individual person the way they need it. We do evaluate things in, on the molecular or the cellular level. So we look into how the consumption of the oxygen inside the mitochondria in the cell is going on. We have criteria to, to measure that. We have um, impacts on if it's working well or not. Uh, we, the trace elements, uh, if they are deficient, how to um, balance uh, the electrolytes, how to make all the hormones work together the way you have a symphony playing because if one player is not working well, you won't hear the melody. It will be interrupted. It will, look, it will sound bad. So the, the, that's how the body um, uh, performs. That's how uh, the hormones uh, work together. Very, very delicate, very much related to each other. And the maintenance, the regeneration, the evaluation, all our stages, so we, we all need to get uh, things, you know, evaluated first and then go from there. This is more deficient if we evaluate this hormone and it is connected. So, for example, thyroid adrenal glands. Some people have thyroid problems. How many doctors evaluate the adrenals as well? In the internal medicine, and I worked in so many places, not a lot of people do that. In the integrative, we, are, we know that integrating the body together is the solution for the problems. So we evaluate the adrenals not to have adrenal fatigue if we treat the thyroid without having adrenal supporting the thyroid. And they are very intimately related. We cannot separate them from each other. Uh, there is uh, so many other things, like if somebody has a concussion or a or an accident, for example, when they are young. And now they come and they have a lot of problems with their hormones. There is a correlation between accidents or concussions or previous history that happened many years ago and what we see now in this body. So if we connect things together, we will start from the beginning, not from the, the end of the problem, which usually become like a band-aid that you just cover the problem with symptomatic treatment rather than sinking till you reach the root and get the root fixed and then once and for all you're good. Dr. Lachine, it's, it's really wonderful what you do there, but it, now more than ever. With Thank you so much. I, I think uh, the way I tell my patients that um, you need to think about your health the way you think about your FICO score. 
you need to invest in your health FICO score so you're all over life get into uh, a better shape. If you're healthy, if you're out of the hospital, if you're living your life right, then every single task in your life will be done easier and without a lot of effort. You will not need three hours to concentrate on something. You will need a few minutes and it's done. And you will not be exhausted. You'll be enjoying what you're doing. You're, if the, your body is telling you, I'm stressed, I'm tired, please believe your body. Pay attention to what, where the stress is. If you eat something and you feel that your stomach is not happy, maybe you're allergic. Maybe your stomach is lacking something to deal with this food. Maybe you shouldn't eat this food as a start or, or, or you know, it's not the, the good time. So for example, what I learned, and this is uh, the European style of uh, integrative as well, that you can eat as much fruits and vegetables as you like in the, in the breakfast and lunch, but you shouldn't eat the, the, the fresh uh, veg veggies or the salads at night, simply because your gut will keep working on the raw and fibers all night long, and it's exhausted. I always tell my patients, your gut, your liver, your kidneys, these are slaved uh, organs in your body. They work day and night. They never have a break for one second. Otherwise, a lot of troubles will happen. So if you have slaves working for you, at least try not to overburden with the job when you're sleeping. So when you go to sleep, you need to do certain things. You need to avoid doing certain things. Uh, so the organs would have a break when you are asleep. When you wake up, how to clean your gut the first thing in the morning, how to alkalinize your body, how to give the body uh, the opportunity to uh, get rid of all the acidification that happened overnight while you're sleeping, how to, have a, how to have a restful sleep, how to feel regenerated in general. You know, it's, it's a lot of details, it's a lot of things, and it's a very uh, rewarding uh, type of medical care because people sit in front of me and they say, we feel great. <laughs> and that was not the situation was only the classic care that, um, you know, a lot of people uh, give. Dr. Lachine, what are the main pillars of gut health? That's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, the gut is equal to a golf course. Can you imagine you're moving around with a golf course? If you open up the gut and you spread it, every single cell beside each other, it's equal to a golf course. So when you're taking care of the health of the gut, you're taking care of a whole golf course on your own. <laughs> so you can, first thing, to clean the gut in the morning, a uh, very simple trick I tell my patients to do is to drink one or two cups of warm water or room temperature with a squeeze of lemon. And the lemon will give certain type of acidity that provokes the body inside to drop a lot of alkaline outside. So you get the body to change from the acidic milieu to the alkaline milieu. And this is a very healthy um, uh, milieu to live with. Uh, let me tell you that even the bacteria, when you have some bacteria up here in the tonsils, if you alkalinize the area, it will not get a, an upper power and give you an, an infection. So um, keeping the pH of the body in, uh, in an optimum uh, alkaline uh, uh, condition will help you a lot in so many ways. That's one thing. Second thing. Give the tribes, the good tribes living in the gut, the upper hand to work for you. So the bacteria are bad and good. The good ones need certain uh, things to live with and to build with. So if you give this bacteria probiotics, for example, you are giving much more soldiers to the good ones to, to help with the building and cutting down the food and uh, processing it and going through the cell membrane and assembling it together and burning it together and giving you the energy. 
if you eat uh, sugars or if you eat greasy food, you are giving the bad guys the upper hand. And the trick happens that even if you eat, they say, oh, we didn't eat anything. Uh, we don't feel full because the, the fatty or the sugary stuff do not give a negative feedback to the satiety center here in the brain that tell you, stop, you ate enough, I don't need any more. That's why the more, when you go to the fast food chains, you will find the people standing in the line have certain, uh, you know, BMI, <laughs> because that's how it propagates. They increase in, in size, they have more satiety, uh, center um, not working, they, they have more appetite to eat the same thing. Simply the body doesn't recognize that stuff, so they don't know what to do with it. So they accumulate it for tomorrow, and then for next month, and then before we know, this person have added pounds and pounds because the, the bacteria just don't know what to do with the, with the food, the bad food. They just keep it in the fat. And that's how we develop the extra fat around the waist or, you know, in the body in general. And then the, the problem happens that these things start to circulate in the blood vessels, accumulate inside the blood vessels and behind the blood vessel wall too. And then atherosclerosis happen, high blood pressure, diabetes, and then we get what we call metabolic syndrome. And it's a vicious circle. They keep circulating together. So the gut... Uh, health with alkalinization, with taking the, the proper probiotics, that's an essential thing for every single person. When you take an antibiotics and in this era with the COVID-19, a lot of people are getting exposed to more interventions, more antibiotics than the usual. So please, everybody need to take probiotic with the antibiotic is an essential thing. If the doctor forgets to give you probiotics, I hope that you don't forget to, to, to get it yourself. It, it's, it's available everywhere. It's not a prescription, but it necessarily need, uh, very much needed to be taken with the antibiotic. Uh, once we, because the antibiotics swipe off the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. It's like a, a bomb. It needs to clean the area. So it cleans it not taking care of which good guy is going to preserve. There is no time for that. It's going to just drop in the gut, work on everybody. And so when it wipes off everybody, we really need to give the good guys the, the, the presence again and the availability for the body to work for it. Uh, of course, uh, eating uh, healthy and organic and all the, the things that we know we, we should be doing is crucial. Uh, and uh, the, the less um, burden with uh, the over-the-counter medications, the, the better it is because the gut will concentrate in taking care of the food that you eat, which is supposed to be the healthy good stuff, helped by the probiotics, processing all to the liver. The liver is not overburdened by uh, the bad things like the Tylenol, ibuprofen, all the over-the-counter things, which we don't know how impure it is. The impurities all drop to the liver as well. Alcohol uh, adds to the burden of the liver. So um, uh, drinking uh, in moderation or not at all would be the best. Uh, and uh, uh, cleaning the, the body with detoxification uh, programs uh, that can help cleaning the liver and the gut and the body from the uh, excessive stuff here and there that happens. The oxidative stresses would be less when you detoxify as well. Uh, we always, I always adjust, uh, advise my patients to have a green juice and the green juice of celery, you know, uh, cucumbers, ginger. Uh, these stuff are very good if you can use it uh, at least once a day. Uh, keeping uh, regular bowel movements, of course, because that's how we clean the gut. And this can be helped by drinking the water uh, first thing in the morning and uh, decreasing the sugars. Sugars feed the bad guys. The cancer cells feed on the sugars as well. Uh, so uh, decreasing the sugar, the, the most sugary thing you're supposed to eat is your fruit. 
and uh, keeping consistent in what you're doing uh, would take you a long way with no problems. Beyond the at-home treatments that you discuss that someone can do on their own, if someone comes in to see you, what's one of the first things that you you move to? What's your go-to? Uh, evaluation of uh, the the patient, or um, I I call them my medical partners. Not all of them are uh, patients. Um, actually, a good percent are um, educated, uh, highly educated about their health, and they come to maintain their health or adjust whatever they think is starting not to work for them. Uh, so I have to evaluate the patient in, uh, in total, as we say, uh, totally. And uh, I usually listen to what is bothering the patient, not what is bothering me on the labs or the, or the investigations, because you know there is a big discrepancy between what the, the patient uh, needs and what I see that he needs. So we have to um, approximate our um, point of views. So I totally respect if I care a lot about the lipids, which is high, or the high blood pressure, but the patient is anxious about something else, which might be as simple as, you know, uh, not sleeping an extra hour that he used to do. So this can have an implication. It can have a lot of things reflecting uh, on him if he's disturbed about certain thing that's going on or was not there and started to appear. Um, uh, a lot of the gentlemen would come and tell me, like especially in the 50s or before that, we go to the gym, we're, uh, we're, we're a gym rat. We're playing like never before. We're exercising very well. And the muscles are not showing. Something is wrong with my body. I was never like that. I used to do half what I am doing and I used to look great. And then that would bring us to hormonal evaluation and the weaning off of certain hormones in the body. As we know, menopause is very famous. Andropause is not. And there is something called andropause, which I take care of in the patient, the male patient, because they, they don't know about it. And a lot of people don't know about it too. It is weaning off of the hormones, the way women get disturbed hormones for years and then no hormones for, for, for the menopause and then other unneeded hormones that come up and cause some side effects like the anxiety or uh, inability to sleep at night or adding weight with just the intention to eat, not even <laughs> the, the eating food. Uh, you know, there is a lot of things that happen in the woman's body all her life. But men are more constant for a while, so they don't expect changes to happen. Actually, there is changes that happen, and hormones in both men and women get affected with time and with age if you don't maintain it or catch it um, in a good time. Thank you, Dr. Lachine. Of course. This is actually an audience question. Are there any books that you would recommend to viewers and everyone that's watching right now? about how they can properly educate themselves on alkaline health? Uh, there is, yeah, my favorite ones uh, is Dr. Thomas Rao. He, he has a very nice book. Uh, I like Dr. Um, Terry Hertug as well. Um, actually, I have one of the books in here. Uh, Hormone Solution, Stay Young. That's one of the books that I think uh, a lot of people would make use of. Uh, and um, the, uh, the European uh, Swiss doctor that I really think he is doing a great job too uh, in uh, the Swiss biological medicine is Dr. Thomas Rao. Who I think he has a couple of books or, or so on, uh, online, you know, you can uh, buy them. Uh, educating uh, yourself, yes, that's very important to believe what you're doing. That's like... 50% uh, of uh, getting a cure is uh, believing that you're going to get better. And the 50% is by all the modalities that anybody can do. That's in the classic medicine, in 
in cancers, in anywhere, in blood pressure, anywhere. Yet, when you uh, know why you're doing what you're doing, it, it makes your job much easier. So uh, I take my time to explain to my patients uh, why they are doing what they are doing, why I'm asking them to do this. And I tell them, if you keep doing things when you have doubts or you're thinking about questions unanswered, then it would be a very tough job. I wouldn't like to do that for myself. And definitely I would like every single uh, person or patient I see to know exactly what they are doing and to believe in what they are doing for themselves too. Thank you so much, Dr. Lachine. Of course. So you and Dr. Safi, again, great partnership, great work that you all do together there at the practice. How did you all meet? How did you get connected? Well, that's a very nice question. Thank you. So I know Dr. Saifi since 1986. We were in medical school together. So uh, we got introduced in uh, Cairo University in medical school. Uh, we were in the same uh, class and we graduated together in 1992. And we had our uh, internship and uh, residency in the same university hospital. Uh, and then Dr. Saifi traveled to uh, the USA and I continued being uh, an associate professor in uh, Cairo University for 18 years. I was a GI or still is GI and a liver doctor. And I got my PhD and master's degree over there. And he pursued his um, um, a career as a plastic surgeon in Emory here. And then we reunited again after I moved to the States and I finished my residency in Michigan and then moved to California. I was recruited in UCLA to be a lead physician uh, in the South Bay uh, in internal medicine department. And um, that's where we reunited again. And we thought about uh, having uh, our own practice, me getting more involved into the integrative medicine, which was the circle that connect uh, the uh, aesthetics and uh, the plastic surgery uh, arts and skills with the internal uh, healing and um, health of uh, the body. So I always tell our patients, uh, uh, mine and Dr. Saifis, that uh, he uh, do the plastic surgery people look fantastic, and uh, we keep it this way. So uh, I, I keep it this way by regenerating from inside out, giving the cells the health and the youth that, need, uh, that is needed to continue looking fantastic. And you, you feel uh, great from inside out. So those who look great and sexy, they have to feel it too. They have to, to feel young. They have to feel uh, inside that they are really full of the bust and you know, the, of the energy and uh, not just looking great in the mirror because this comes a lot of uh, psychological, you know, uh, falls uh, for people, especially, you know, the celebrities are like that. So they, they look great, but inside mentally or uh, psychologically or health wise, they don't uh, have a coping skills to get inside equal to the outside. And that's when people, you know, um, start uh, having troubles in, in health in general. Thank you, Dr. Lachine. What's the most common issue that you're addressing there? On your well, end of the Go ahead. On, on your end of the business there, what's the most common issue that you're addressing? Uh, the most common thing is hormone imbalance. So we do have uh, uh, a lot of uh, imbalances which are not uh, seen or expected by uh, uh, the, the patients. So when they, uh, they come saying, I drag myself out of the bed in the morning after nine hours sleep, what's, what's the problem? Why am I feeling so? Or they say, oh, I, I feel my body is divorcing me. I can't take it anymore. I, I have heard it all. And more and more, it's the hormone problems. So it starts as early as the 30s. And uh, people don't expect it. And so they keep 
circulating around it um, till they find somebody who think about it might be that. So once we start evaluating, uh, you find the problem easily and you fix it quickly. Uh, hormones still need a little bit of longer term to take care of because the women hormone get adjusted after weeks. Uh, men's hormone takes like two weeks or three weeks. Women's take more uh, like three months to uh, reach the normal level that you can function with. But this is the main thing uh, where patients really have a lot of trouble, especially thyroid or adrenal fatigue or, you know, the uh, menopause and anthropos. Uh, the second problem that I encounter a lot is um, we are sick a lot of times. We get flu all the time. We get infections. We don't feel well. We have fatigue. We can, we can concentrate. So there's a lot of, of you know, um, complaints or symptoms that they come with. And of course, the universal would be the weight problem. <laughs> so all of them are, you know, adding together to the same thing that there is some imbalance down there in the hormones and there is certain deficiencies here or there, or the, the cells are not efficiently burning or uh, or um, processing or having enough enzymatic uh, reactions anymore. It's just like the, your car. You need to maintain it every year and you need to update certain things. And even the GPS or the navigator needs update. It's exactly the same, but on a much more sophisticated level. Thank you, Dr. Lachine. Of course. Are there any areas that you work in that we haven't discussed yet? Um, not really. You have covered it all. <laughs> Fantastic. You've given us so much great information today. Really Thank grateful. You. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your presence. Thank you so much. Can you go through your social media so people can contact you directly? Uh, yeah. How can I do that? You mean right now or, um, I yeah, mean, okay. Say what your handle is on Instagram, Facebook as well. Uh, I, have, I have an Instagram. Uh, uh, it's called Newport Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. That's uh, uh, mine with Dr. Saifi. I have one under my name too. Uh, it's uh, called Dr. Sahar Lashin. And I have a couple of pages on the Facebook. It's called Swiss Biological, um, uh, The Art of Healing Using Swiss uh, American Biological Medicine. Uh, if they put their, my name, they can find me. And uh, I do, I'm, I'm available in general, in, you know, in, in Yelp, uh, just our page over there. But the main Instagram would be the Newport Anti-Aging and uh, Integrative Medicine. Thank you so much. And the website as well. Um, uh, my website is uh, Sahar, my first name, at uh, Dr. Dr. Sahar Lachine.com. Thank you, Dr. Lachine. We have a quick audience question as well, because we, ha we didn't cover this. Right now, what's something that someone could do at home that's having trouble sleeping during the pandemic? Very good question. That's one of the things that I didn't uh, cover in, uh, in full depth. So uh, sleeping in the pandemic with all the stress and anxiety is very challenging. And although you have more time at home, you can't even sleep. Uh, the, the sleeping problem happens when you start changing your timing to go to bed. And when you go to bed and you don't know the sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene includes no electronics in bed. If you're sitting in bed, you should only concentrate on sleeping and not for watching a TV. Having a TV in the bedroom is a no-no for me. I always tell my patients, take the TV out. It's not a good health or sleep hygienic measure to have something stimulating your brain, telling you, well, wake up, uh, watch. The brain with time gets fixed up. Should I wake up and watch the TV or read a book or go through the, the emails on the cell phone or should I sleep? After a few days, the, the brain is now awake. You go to bed, 
and you try to sleep, even if you don't do this uh, interfering measures, the brain is mixed up already. You have to rehabilitate the, the brain, re-educate the brain that when I go to bed, it's only for sleep. So being in bed, you have to be in bed for only 30 minutes. If you can't sleep after 30 minutes, get up and go. Go somewhere else. Go to sit on the couch outside. Go and do something outside the bedroom. That's one thing. Simple thing that you might uh, take at home as well is um, drinking warm coconut milk uh, and you can add some cocoa on it and this can soothe you and give you enough tryptophan uh, to, um, uh, to, to soothe down in sleep. If the, 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 the simple ways didn't work, I usually uh, give a boost of a natural um, uh, supplements like L-theonine, which is extremely safe and very nice, cool. makes people cool down, soothe down, and can sleep well. Uh, melatonin, not all the patients like it because it has an after effect in the morning with some muscle aches, and it needs coenzyme Q10 to be given with it. But in general, L-theonine is very, very nice. It's a supplement. And uh, there is 5-hydroxy, 5-HTP, uh, 5-hydroxy tryptophan. That's another thing that can be taken. It ha I have to check the, the list of medications, though. Uh, and uh, there is GABA as well. Uh, certain supplements that can be given all natural uh, can help to uh, induce uh, sleep in a more natural way. Of course, uh, if the sleep is interrupted in the middle of the night, this can indicate a certain hormone imbalance and it will need us to evaluate the hormones for it. If uh, the, uh, the morning um, wake up is, uh, is not uh, restful, then this is another evaluation for some hormones that because they, this means things to me. It indicates certain things to me. The pattern of sleep, uh, inability to sleep, um, alcohol, by the way, can, can induce sleep as a start, but it can make you wake up after two or three hours. So sometimes people who drink late at night can have this problem as well. Um, otherwise, you know, meditation before sleeping, deep breathing, um, uh, avoid having caffeine after 5 p.m., um, avoid doing strenuous exercise uh, at 5 or 6 p.m. That's your maximum. Um, and um, other than that, uh, you know, uh, we have to uh, double check and make sure that uh, there is nothing that we're missing that is causing the insomnia. Thank you so much, Dr. Lachine. We have another audience question. I know we touched on at the beginning about waking up in water with the lemon and also fruits and vegetables throughout the day. I think cutting them off at five o'clock. What are the best foods that you would suggest to someone to detoxify their body? Detoxification can occur uh, uh, in so many ways. So uh, you need uh, boosting uh, elements uh, to help you with the detoxification. That's why we have certain uh, things that you need to get in a box or, you know, uh, uh, some uh, powders or pills that can help to detoxify radically, like uh, on, an, uh, on a professional way. But at home, if you would like to do the light detoxification, uh, then dendrolin uh, tea is one of uh, the bitter teas that stimulate the liver to secrete a lot of its juices and, uh, or dendrolin. Not everybody like it because it's very bitter. But you have to drink it, feel the bitterness in the mouth because this induces certain secretions of, cert of pre preparing for what you're going to uh, swallow. So the gallbladder starts to produce what's inside, the pancreas, the gut, all, all that uh, secretions will start to be um, produced once you feel this bitterness in the mouth. So the, the dandelion tea is one of them. That's a simple thing at home. Uh, the, um, the green juice, like the celery, the um, uh, garlic, um, uh, cucumber, uh, the, what we call the alkaline green juice is one of the things that you can also do at home in your blender, uh, and it can help. Of course, detoxification can be as simple as that, and you don't need much if 
you're not exposed to many toxins or burdens or stressors or oxidative stress, but it might need more um, radical detoxification uh, in certain situations. So for example, I got one of my patients, she was very, very healthy, uh, or so she thought, and she came with headaches and um, some, um, you know, fatigue and, and pains. And she told me, I don't eat except fish. I don't even need, eat meat or, or dairy or any of the things that, you know, can induce any inflammation in the body. And uh, fish was an alarming thing to me if it's eaten every day because there's mercury in that. So I checked her mercury and good enough, it came back high. So we had to detoxify her specifically for that. So although you might be adopting a very healthy lifestyle, you might not know how it can affect you or affect your body. And if the body is able to detoxify on its own or it needs a professional detoxification to occur. Thank you so much, Dr. Lachine. What about foods for balancing hormones? What would the, the best buds be there? So, Dr. Lachine, we're losing your audio a little bit. Yeah, try your headphones. It's it's still very staticky. The signals you can see the signal Yeah, but just the audio is not good. I I'd love to hear what the foods are, <laughs> but I can't properly hear you, and I know no one else can either. If I can't. So. Um, I had, um, I didn't change anything, so I don't even know how to solve this problem. Yeah, yeah, right, right. No, no. It's just, it's not good audio. It's not good audio. Well, listen, Dr. Lachine, you've been, you've been incredible. Your partnership, you've done such great work. We're so thrilled to work together with you. And what a, what a great session. Thank you for all the information you gave us and book recommendations and all that we can do to stay healthier. Continue to stay healthy and safe and on behalf of Hope Living and the Hope Beauty Network, thank you once again. Thank you so much.